Zach Williams. Balenciaga. Balenciaga. It was a, a very interesting first season in the navy blue for Zach Williams. And I think there was a lot... Oh, I'm pretty sure there was a lot of excitement with all of us because he was one of the uh, the few recruits along with Adam Saar that we had brought into the club from, from 2020 into 2021. Um, we knew that we needed to add some more, I guess, talent or polish or class around and, and, and senior experience around the group that we already had. And obviously we went and, and, and spent, you know, marquee money on a marquee player. And um, that was really the standard that I judged Zach to in that, you know, you have a finite amount of resources being the salary cap. And uh, when you spend a large chunk of that on one player, I, I guess there, there comes with that an expectation that that player is going to deliver. Um, at the end of the day, do I feel like he delivered on, on what I thought we were getting? No, I don't. Um, were my expectations unfair? I don't think so. I was in my head. I was looking for a guy that you know was going to be able to give us that you know twenty to twenty five, say twenty three touches a game, something like that. Someone that could win his own ball. Someone that could provide some grunt. Um, I think the alarming thing with with the whole midfield experiment was really the language from the beginning because I think even when he was signed, David Teague in the first press conference when he spoke about Zach Williams was, oh well, if it doesn't work in the midfield, then he can just go to half back and. In hindsight, that probably was telling because they maybe I mean, maybe from the outside world looking in, we got him to be a midfielder and of. Um, but it's almost like they had a fallback plan in case he didn't become a midfielder. Almost like they weren't too fussed and it was kind of like, well, we'll fit him in. And I've just got a few question marks over him at the moment. Um, has he fit in with the group? Um What's his body like? What are his training standards like outside of football? Um, I think at the end of the day, all AFL players, I mean, they're super talented and you know, you've got to give them the respect that they deserve because it's, it's a tough league and not everyone can play. But ultimately, when you look at world sport, the ones that are really succeeding at the high level are the ones that are doing more than what everyone else is doing. And I just, I wonder what was the work that went into his preseason to get his body right. We knew that he had had niggles in the past and some serious injuries as well. And I guess it, it might have, look, I hope, you know, the optimist in me absolutely believes in Zach Williams. Let's not, let's not get that mixed up. I believe he's exactly what we needed. Um, I just don't know if he prepared fully for coming to Carlton and, and playing, you know, for the Carlton Football Club. And, and that, I think, is a good thing. It, it could be, a, a, a you know, a reality check for him because it, it could be the wake-up call that he needs and big preseason now and he, he's sort of got to prove himself, I guess, next year and onwards. And, and ultimately, the standard that he's going to be judged to will be the one that he was judged to this year. Um, I thought there were some games where he, he gave us what we... There were probably three games where I thought, there he is. That's the, This is what I pictured. Um the game against Hawthorne, I thought it was fantastic. Uh, I also think he was good against the Eagles and the Crows. And, uh, you know, um, we just need to see more of it. He's got to get on top of his body. He's got to get himself in the condition where he can play more midfield minutes. Because ultimately, I think we want to see him through the midfield. Whether it's as a full-time midfielder or not, I don't really know. I don't really know what the what the coaching will be. We still don't have a coach at the time of filming this video. So I think he's a very good piece to have. Also, with Sam Doherty, we don't really know where he's at with his health. He's got a lot more uh, important things to worry about than footy at the moment. Um, so it, it is, in a way, a blessing to have a guy like Zach Williams who can play off that halfback flank in in the role that Doherty you know, has played for us for many years. So that's kind of where I'm looking right now with him. It was frustrating for me, I must say. And I get it, it's tough, but... Um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's on Zach, it's, it's on Zach and, and how hard he wants to work to be the best player that he can be. And, you know, there's a notion in world sport about players, obviously they, they work so hard when they enter the league in any sport, you know, to prove themselves, they earn a big contract. And in this case, Zach's earned a big contract. Had he done the work to earn that contract yet? Or did we, did we invest in him based on the potential growth? I think we invested in him based on his potential growth as opposed to what he had really demonstrated. I mean, when you look at a guy like Luke Parker, who's available 
at the end of 2021, you look at the body of work, he's the kind of guy that you say, yeah, absolutely, you throw a marquee contract at him. So th these are kind of where my thoughts are. I still believe in Zach. I still believe he has plenty to offer. I'm hoping that 2021 was a bit, a bit of a reality check for him in the sense of, oh, okay, I really need to put the work in and I really need to become the best version of me because I think the best version of Zach Williams is is a great asset for, for the club. I really do. Um, has he integrated fully with the team, the club, the community? I don't know. Is that affected due to COVID? I also don't know. Um, I guess I just have more questions. I want to have answers and you know, it's a six year deal. We, we're here, we're here for six years. And you know, the questions will come, the pressure will come. This is the nature of the beast. It's ruthless. It really is. You know, he was obviously called out as well during the year for his work rate, you know, by Jonathan Brown and the guys on, on, on the couch on Fox footy. And, you know, from my end, and I guess from, from our end of supporters, we're going to back him in obviously. Um, but I've got to be real. It was, I'm left wanting more. And that's just the truth. I'm left wanting more from Zach this year. Also because I know he's got more to give. So high level, that's where I'm thinking. I didn't think he got his job done this year. I think he's got a lot of growth to come and um, fingers crossed he stays injury free, puts the serious work in in the off season and comes back round one with a bang. And um, I'm not expecting a Brownlow medalist, but I guess I am expecting a guy that can be in that mix of that, you know, top 50, top 60 players um, in the competition. And, and I, I really do believe that that's where he can get to. So... That's my take on Zach Williams. Uh, very interested to hear your thoughts on, on how you think his season went and, and where you think we can deploy him. I know it's tough at the moment because we don't have a coach, so we don't have a philosophy to, to fit Zach Williams into. But I guess this is a, an interesting time for us to talk about it and discuss it and, and get some ideas and, and maybe refine them as well. So let me know what you think in the comments below and we'll go from there.